Tonight we're back in the 2022 BMW i4 M50. This is BMW's fully electric sedan. It goes about 270 miles on a charge. This one has 536 horsepower. It's all wheel drive. It's based on the four series Grand Coupe. And uh, we've already filmed a POV day drive on this. Give you guys some initial impressions. I wanted to film a night drive tonight, show you guys what the headlamps look like, interior ambient lighting, and give you some final thoughts on my week in this i4. So let's walk you around this real quick, show you what the back seat looks like with the uh, interior lights. A little bit cramped, but still usable. One of my favorite things about this is that it is a lift back. So you get a great amount of trunk and cargo space. at the little bit of an expense of back seat room. We have this beautiful frosted or frozen Portimao blue. I believe it's a $3,600 or $3,900 option. BMW laser headlamps, M packages. Starting price on this is about 66 grand. As tested, we're around $82,000, but this has every conceivable option on it. massive displays here showing us a startup screen <laughs> this is an EV that makes some cool noises you can turn all the sounds off but um, I like to leave them on and it just I think it adds and enhances the driving experience just a little bit pretty attractive looking interior very four series very familiar except for these big screens and the lack of climate control buttons. Instead, you have a climate menu, which you can still control with the iDrive uh, scroll wheel, but it's a little bit more tedious to use. Still, if you leave it on climate control auto um, and you're not too uh, high maintenance with your climate control, you can use it. You get a button for your heated steering wheel, but all of your heated seat controls, fan speeds, everything else is in this menu. I love these displays, super high res really just a sharp looking car. This has garnered a lot of attention this week from people uh, and it's it's worthy of it. It looks really sharp. I love the design of the exterior. Uh, it kind of has a little bit of an M5 appearance to it. The wider rear fenders, these 20 inch wheels. Um, yeah, it's a nice looking EV. Great high resolution, bright reverse cameras. All right, let's set off and give you guys some more thoughts on this. So we have a couple different drive modes. We can put this into comfort, which is what we're in right now. Eco Pro, which I honestly haven't really touched much this week. And Sport or Sport Boost, and there's also a Sport individual setting. And you can hear in this mode, a fun noise. <laughs> we have our auto high beams enabled. These headlamps are fantastic at night. And this does have a nice one pedal drive mode. It will bring the car to a complete stop. Just flip the shifter over into B from drive over to the left, and you get a decent amount of regenerative braking. If you're driving aggressively or fast, you are gonna to have to dip into the brake pedal. And luckily we have the BMW M brake package on this car. Brakes have a ton of bite. They're a little bit touchy, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice transition from Regen to pad on rotor in this BMW i4. Otherwise, I've really enjoyed driving this car this week. It's grown on me the more time I've spent with it. Uh, this is a very solid EV. It's definitely regular car that just so happens to be electric. Uh, there is some serious, serious performance here. <laughs> A 
bit of torque steer, which is kind of a surprise. But overall, it handles pretty well. There's a lot of mechanical grip. You do feel the weight of this car. It is a little bit over 5,000 pounds. But honestly, the limits are so high on it that you're probably not going to approach them on the street in this. This I-4's party piece is the acceleration. <laughs> and the level of response from the throttle, it's wild. It's just... Some EVs have kind of dulled throttle response a little bit just to make it a bit of a smoother driving experience. No, except for just a millisecond of a delay with your inputs, this BMW is pretty much one-to-one -one with whatever you give it. It makes for a pretty exciting driving experience. You can kind of shoot gaps and uh, really just kind of make passes in this thing that aren't possible in a vehicle with an internal combustion engine. Suspension is soft, it's quiet, it's comfortable. We have uh, adaptive suspension and air springs in the rear. The steering is weighted very well, but there isn't a lot of feel. It's pretty isolated. It's still a fun car to drive though. It feels solid, even on these 20 inch wheels. There's not a ton of cabin intrusion. It just makes a cool noise here. I'll show you some of the ambient lighting options. So if you go into menu, interior lighting, color. This is a nice one, sunset orange. But you can see you've got a bunch of different options here. You can change the brightness, whatever you want. Props to BMW on the graphics for these displays, they are absolutely stunning. Hopefully you guys can get a pretty good idea. I'm filming with a new camera tonight. This is the new Insta360 One RS one inch edition. So it's got the one inch sensor and hopefully this will give us some really nice footage for night drives going forward. I've been holding back on these a little bit just because my GoPro kind of sucks for night video and previous gen Insta360 wasn't that impressive, so. Headlights are just awesome. So much illumination, so much mechanical grip, jeez. You get toward the limit in this i4 M50 and it doesn't have the best chassis if I'm being honest, um, but that limit is very, very high. And unless if you're on track trying to slide this thing around, you really won't, it won't bother you. Stability, traction control on this, there is a DSC off mode, but I can still feel quite a bit of intervention uh, when I enable it. There is launch control, and that's super impressive, but honestly, the throttle is so responsive in this i4 that just from a dig without launch control, the launch is hugely <laughs> shocking on its own. So um, yeah, you can use launch control. It's easy to enable, hard on the brake, foot down on the throttle, and you're off. Uh, we'll do a little launch control before we wrap up tonight. But yes, um, I've had a couple issues this week. CarPlay doesn't seem to want to work. It was working perfectly early on and um, it just stopped working wired, wireless, no no dice. And uh, all my satellite radio stations are, aren't working. There's no actually no radio working at all. So I don't know if this car needs a hard reset or some issue, there's some, some, something's going on, but it was happening with uh, Daily Motor last week too. I'll have to tell the people at BMW and hopefully they can get, get it fixed, but that's just a problem with this specific i4. Um, otherwise, this new iDrive 8 system has been pretty good. Really, my only complaint is that we have lost climate control buttons and knobs, which I think is a bit of a shame, but yeah, you can always use voice activation or uh, just you know keep your climate menu up. How do I compare this to a Model 3 Performance? Well, it's heavier. It's about 700 some pounds heavier than a Model 3 Performance. Um, it is so much nicer, so much better built. The NVH, the quality, the materials, everything in here is next level on top of Tesla. I mean, this is a legacy automaker and uh, Tesla doesn't really care too much about interior quality. So 
this i4 has that going for it. Performance is, as makes no difference, pretty darn similar. It's slightly slower to 60 than the, temp, the Model 3 performance, but honestly, you wouldn't really notice that much of a difference. Where this i4, I think, falls a little bit short in terms of the M badges that are plastered all over it is uh, you, the stability control system needs a little bit of work. It's a bit, uh, power distribution feels a little bit front driven. There's a little bit of torque steer in this, which is kind of surprising. And uh, you can't really slide this thing around. So in the winter, I don't know what this would like be like a set of winter tires. Would it be as fun as a four M440i? Mm, I don't think so. So there's that. But otherwise, a fantastic daily driver. If you have owned BMWs in the past and you want something that's modern and fresh and fun and exciting and just a nice daily, it's got M car performance, but without the harshness, it doesn't beat you up. Oh man, I've, I've had neighbors and people chomping at the bit approaching me about this car all week and a lot of people are really excited about it and as a result i've gotten a little bit more excited about it too because it is a pretty cool overall package so anyway i think that's going to sum up my thoughts on the i4 m50i let's do a little launch control in here let's see if we can sneak something in traction off let's just do this ready I do wish the speedometer, like the digits climbed more accurately and a little bit quicker. I think it would add to the drama of the level of acceleration you're achieving. A lot of miles per hour are getting skipped in that digital display. Back in a comfort for a little bit. I like, it. I mean, maybe it's a little bit gimmicky, but I do like seeing EVs with a little bit of active sound played through the speakers or under the car. It's, you know, it's nice to be able to turn that off if you want a completely silent driving experience. And I can understand some people wanting to do that. But this has been tuned by Hans Zimmer, and that makes it kind of special in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I, I quite like the noises this makes. It's, it's exciting makes it feel like a Tron or something like that. And really the only other EV that I have been impressed with the sounds that it makes is the Audi RS e-tron GT. Haven't driven a Taycan yet, uh, so we'll see uh, what that is like someday. But yeah, exciting to see BMW make an entry into the EV space. Hopefully we're getting a uh, BMW iX tomorrow, the SUV. So that is actually a ground up full EV platform. This is just a four series with some batteries in it and electric motors. So uh, still a very impressive effort and a really, really nice overall car from BMW. They've done a great job with this. Um, I would like to see an M variant someday. Uh, power level seems about pretty good for this. You can always have more power, but I would really like BMW to work on the stability control on the chassis tuning. And I think that could really set them apart in the market. Um, I just want an EV that I can slide around and have some fun with and maybe throw it into rear wheel drive a little bit. The ability to, there's just so much potential with electric motors and these electric cars. And I feel like we are, most manufacturers are just kind of touching the surface of what's possible with traction control and torque distribution and power distribution. And I feel like there's a lot more to be done in that space. And uh, my only complaint about this is I feel like BMW was a little bit lazy with that. The power distribution in this is a little bit wonky, a little bit funky. So some places to be improved there, uh, maybe even with just a software update. It is really all programming at the end of the day. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Take care. Some great accents on this i4. Love the carbon fiber treatments. A little subtle lip spoiler in the back. It does kind of look like an M5, especially in this blue. Good looking BMW, good size. 
no front, unfortunately. Not a huge fan of the front grille, but uh, the rest of the car looks so great, I kind of can forgive it.